well, we're back after the Christmas break, and so we're going to do something a little different, which is look into Game Stock Card 2012. This released a few months ago in the, about October, I think it was, and it's made by Riser Studios, who are a Brazilian based company. This game is based off the 2012 Brazilian Stock Card series that they were run over there. And it's also got five other different series, such as Formula 3s and Minis and uh, different things like that. So basically, me and Danny jumped in a random server, turned all the aids off and just went to drive around and see what it was like basically. All the cars are pretty much the same level, it's just different manufacturers, you've got either Peugeot or Chevrolet and then there's various different liveries for them. Now this was my first run out of the pit lane, I had no idea where I was going, because I've never actually driven this game before today, so it was all new to me. The sound keeps cutting out because Danny was talking to me over normal. But as you can s probably tell it's been uh, built off the ISI engine for R Factor 1. Uh, my first run out of the pit lane ended up in a back crash in the wall. But yeah, it's built off the ISA engine from our factor and it works pretty well. So, second attempt out of it, then. Rise of Studios have also got another game coming out shortly called Formula Truck. Not sure when it is coming out, but did release a trailer for it not that long ago. Now once again on the same corner I go off, this time I'm to keep it out of the wall though. So now I've actually managed to get around a couple of corners, I can actually start to get a feel for the car and the track and whatnot. Of course with no aids there's no track control or ABS or anything. Manual, yes. The only thing that is actually turned on is the auto clutch. But apart from that, there's nothing. So this brings us back on to the start finish straight. I'm going to try actually complete a lap. At this point I wasn't sure where to brake because of the track going off to the left there with the markers. This first couple of corners is quick so you need to brake about 175 metres and put it down into fourth. And this corner I spent the entire night trying to get this right. It's, you have to brake whilst turning and there's not much room to get it right. So you either brake whilst turning or you manage to brake in a straight line. A bit further on, we've managed to set a few lap times. But they're nowhere near the sort of pace that you should be running. Danny's ahead of me this time. and demonstrates what it's like if you get it wrong or anything in the first corner. I always followed him in there. Okay, you kinda of gotta break and turn for that first corner if you wanna be quick so it's quite tricky. Once again I get braking wrong for this but I managed to uh, hold it all together and carry on. Danny on the other hand didn't. I think at this point he was trying to stay out of my way, but I was just miles behind him, so I can stepped out of there, so I nearly crashed straight into the side of him. It's rather close. See, this corner here is quite tricky because you can either take it in second, or if you get it really right, you can take it in third. So it just takes a bit of getting used to. Into the right hand hairpin, the ultimate corner on the track. Out on the curb there, so the back end stepped out slightly. Watch 
Surprisingly, you can actually break at 100 meters from that corner. I've only ever driven like Formula One star cars, so this is all different to me. I'm not sure when the best time to be braking is and whatnot. I think this was, yeah, this is coming up to a few of my quickest laps that I did in the practice session. There's a few more people on the server now. And I'm nowhere near the pace that they're running. Danny actually got the hang of it quite well, he wasn't too far off them, but I was struggling quite badly. By this point I'd actually figured out how to take this corner. Probably a bit slow, but it's better than flying off into the wall. That corner there is pretty much flat out. Turn into second. Run it out over the curbs. Into third for this corner. I've got the apex nicely so you can get a good exit. Then into second for this right hand hairpin again. And then over the start, well, no, it's not starting straight, actually, this is starting straight for the other layout of this circuit. Final corner. I'm 0.8 seconds slower than myself at the minute and 3.2 off the quickest time. The guys that joined us were pretty quick. And it up 3.3 uh, seconds. back into the first corner this was all towards the end of the practice yesterday now must have had um, probably about half an hour of practice session Exit that corner is actually tighter than you think. You've got to wait until you put the power down. But this is certainly, certainly a fun game once you turn all the aids off and just go with it. There's a power slide out that corner. Handling feels good. Cars, you can get. The hang of the handling pretty quickly once we've got a basic idea, driven a few laps. Cars aren't too quick and they aren't too slow. And the handling feels fine to me. And this was one of the last couple of laps in the practice session. Once again Getting side raising that braking zone. Flat out through there. And this is where you see it looks tighter than it, but well, it doesn't look as tight as it should be. Got out way too wide there, putting the power down too early. I was 0.4 seconds up at that point, but I lost it all. These are certainly fun cars to drive and we'll be checking out the other classes, minis and Formula 3s and whatnot. Although unfortunately they couldn't actually get the license for the mini livery so they all blank, which is a shame. Yeah, that trip across the gravel cost me a good second or so. So now to finish things off we jumped into a race, 15 minute endurance race. We were quite far off the guy's pace, really. I was a good three or four seconds off. I wasn't sure where this guy to my right was. 
So I gave him some room on the outside, but it turns out he was behind me anyway. Danny and the leader locking the brakes into this tricky corner, almost running into each other. I soon disposed of the guy behind me. I'm not sure what happened to him actually, he just seemed to vanish. Eventually retired. There's only four of us in the race, but these guys were racing against with well the leader was pretty good, he seemed to know what he was doing, but that guy behind me just vanished and never saw him again. So end of the first lap then. Danny locks up a bit more. By the end of the first lap I was three and a half seconds behind Danny. Probably a bit too slow into there, but I made it around fine, so and it was a fifteen minute race so I could spend the time doing what I needed to do. And then I completely lose it there. Never actually done that before. So that cost me a load of time. So at this point I'm just kind of sat on my own for the rest of the race. Finishing off the second lap. My lap was 11 seconds slower than the leader at that point. Probably went down a gear too much there, you should probably take that instead. Easily. Maybe fourth if you want. Into first for this corner. By this point, I'd. I've got a pretty decent hang on what the track was and how you're supposed to take it. It's just that one corner that I sometimes just couldn't get right because of having to brake whilst turning. I was way too wide out that corner there as well. And I get the power on way too early at that corner. And round I went. I spent way too long trying to turn around though, to be honest. Probably should have got going a bit quicker. So I was definitely on my own for the rest of the race now. If I could actually keep this thing on the road, I'd probably be able to keep up with the guys in front, or not drop as much time, but... It's easy to make mistakes. Want the grass slightly into there. A bit hairy.
So yeah, we're gonna continue on with this uh, coverage. Get out a few races and various different series and whatnot. And then obviously we've got Formula Truck to come as well once that becomes available. And that looks a hell of a lot of fun driving those trucks around. So it should be exciting. The only problem is a lot of the servers are Brazilian, so we've got fairly high pings. I think we had pings of about 300 when we was on this server, which wasn't ideal. And I lose it into the first corner again. I've never actually done that until that point. At this point I knew I wasn't going to catch anyone so I was just trying to not screw up and put it in the wall. But these cars are certainly a lot of fun to drive as I go straight on again. Just wide out that corner. And I lose it again at this point. I should have parked the car then, because that was pretty hefty work on the front of the car there. Lost the bonnet. And I think this have had 100% uh, more to bear on damage, so I really should have parked the car. And as I come into this corner, you can tell. It's not right. That he spun it there as well. God. It's not very easy driving a car that's broken to this degree. I'm not sure what it was that's broke, but. I think it was probably the front left that damaged. It just didn't want to break or turn how it should have done. Especially going into this corner. Nearly hit the wall again. And went wide because of it. So I was just trying to get back to the pits at this point to try and get it repaired. But alas, as I braked into this corner, I was a bit too late and I got on the curb and crossed the gravel and straight into the wall. And that just completely killed the engine. So that's it for this coverage, so I hope you stick around for a bit more and we'll see you next time.